Why, hello, friends and fans of the podcast. Welcome to another sode of music a la mode. Wow. I just need to say it again. Wow. I'm going to start this episode off by saying right now, I promise you, I will not be doing today's featured artist any justice. I just won't. I don't know much about what they do. I did do a good amount of research like I always do. And no, I don't just go to their wiki page. So I won't be able to cover everything. And I'm also pretty confident that when I am done describing this next artist, you will scratch your head and be like, um, yeah, so, uh, like, now what? Because some bands are just like that. They're great. They're innovative, they're creative, they're soulful, they're wonderful, and almost impossible to explain with words. Yes, that's why I always say go to YouTube, go to Spotify, go to Apple Music. I don't care if you go to the music store and buy their vinyl record. I can't sit here and play their music for you for a lot of reasons, but mostly because I don't like lawyers, I don't like being sued, and I have a morbid fear of worms. So before we get started, I have a backbeat from friend of the podcast, John. A while ago, I asked, who do you think of when you hear trumpet? You know, who comes to mind? A few people responded, and John said something interesting. He said, Dizzy Gillespie. Good old Dizzy G. Now, this is interesting. I got to hand it to John. And I am glad he mentioned Dizzy Gillespie. And he also made a point to mention Dizzy's cheeks. Dizzy Gillespie is a very interesting trumpeter because he actually puffs out his cheeks when he plays, which 99.875483321% of trumpeters don't do. I went my whole life thinking Dizzy Gillespie was fat. Yeah, I thought he was a fat man. And then I saw him and like, you're not fat. But I assumed he was fat because my memory of him growing up is a big fat face. Because he used to puff open his cheeks when he played trumpet. And it is distracting, man. I mean, there's times I'm watching him play and I don't even pay attention to the music anymore. I literally think to myself, what if I just like take a needle and pop one of those cheeks? Yes, it's disgusting. Yes, it's a morbid thought. But yes, I'm just being honest. Oh, little tidbit of information. Dizzy Gillespie and Arturo Sandoval, both known for hitting high notes on the trumpet, might end up at some point being a future sod. Okay? Who knows? I'll tell you what, though. Don't ever think I'm going to get tired of talking about brass. Um, Brass is the real deal. It really is. And I love how it's making a comeback. In fact, um, another backbeat from Chris, way out of Arizona. I asked who comes to mind when you hear the word trumpet, and he comes back with Timmy Trumpet. Now, at first I thought he was kidding. I mean, Timmy Trumpet? I don't know. It's like Tiny Tim. I I don't know. It just seems like a made-up name. I mean, it is a made-up name. He wasn't born named Timmy Trumpet. Um, But I thought that Chris was being a wise guy or a troll, you know, like, oh, yeah, go look at Timmy Trumpet, man. He's really cool. So I did my due diligence. I went to YouTube and I typed in Timmy Trumpet expecting to get nothing. And I got ready for this. You guys are going to really be surprised by this. Okay, I got Timmy Trumpet. And can I just say, okay, so I was watching him play. He, ha- he was playing live, DJing, okay? He's a DJ and a producer before he's anything. He was DJing in, in front of a live audience of like 40,000 people. And these people were going nuts. And, and because I really do give my due diligence, I sat there and listened to this dude for like a half hour straight. And then I started begin, you know, I began to question, why do you call yourself Timmy Trumpet if you don't play the trumpet? I'm just going to change my name. To like, you know, Artie Cello, even though I don't play the cello, but Artie Cello sounds good. It sounds like an Italian dessert. That'll bring in the, the crowd. But lo and behold, Timmy Trumpet grabbed a beautiful black trumpet, which, if I may say, is gorgeous. I've always liked black trumpets. I don't know why. And he began to play it. 
and it was just the way I like. Slow and melodic, it just fit the music. And then as, as I'm listening to Timmy Trumpet, I'm like, oh no, do I, do I have more work on my hands? Is he going to be a future episode? Um, so who knows? Thank you, Chris, for the, for the suggestion. I was not disappointed. I was actually very surprised, but it's very, very different. So I can't just do it superficially. I have to give it, give it my all, if you know what I mean. Um, but let's get into the meat and potatoes of today's sode. Today, we need to be sharp and see the band Bajo Fondo. I looked it up. Bajo Fondo could be like low background or low bottom. Don't know exactly what they mean by that name, but I actually couldn't care less because their music is awesome. So, for me, Bajo Fondo means an awesome band of eight or nine people from Uruguay and Argentina, baby. I used to live in the deep south of Brazil, and I know I've mentioned this in some of my past sodes, and um, it, things are different. The farther south you go into South America, it's almost like the further European you're going into Europe. It's, uh, it's a really nice culture. It's a gigantic mix of Latin America and European all together. Now, how did I actually first hear of this band? Well, it was about the year 2002. 2003, I was living up in Massachusetts and I'm doing what all young single men do, washing windows. And I left the place that I was working at and I was going to my next job to wash windows. And I stopped at a place called Lala Java in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. I was heading towards Worcester. So I stopped at this place and this is actually a funny place with a funny story because the, uh, back then there, was, there were only two Lala Javas on the planet, one in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts, and one in Palm Springs, California. And uh, at, the, at this time, a friend of mine from Palm Springs was living um, in Massachusetts. And at the end of the day, I'm like, oh, I got my coffee at Lala Java. And she's like, you, what? Huh? Lala Java? There's one of those out in, out in Palm Springs. And I'm like, wow, that's all right. There must be a huge chain going from coast to coast. No. The same owner opened two of these places, one in Shrewsbury and one in Palm Springs. And I just happened to have a friend from Palm Springs living in the Shrewsbury area who knew of Lala Java. It was actually kind of weird. You know, now that I tell the story, it's like, um, yeah, what's the punchline there, buddy? So anyways, I'm sitting at Lala Java drinking some nice flavored coffee, probably pistachio. You know, anything flavored pistachio, I will probably eat. I just love things that are flavored pistachio. But anyways, so I'm sitting there, and do, do, you, do you remember way back when, when you went into a coffee shop, they used to have live, not, um, not live music, they used to have music playing in the system, and they would have the CD cover right behind the register, right? Or in front of the register from the customer's point of view. And you, if you like the song, you can pick up the CD cover and see who it is, check it out. Remember when that used to happen? Yeah, that was only like a decade and a half ago. I feel like it, 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 you know, like candy bars were a nickel, television was black and white when, when that used to happen, but no, it was only about 10 to 15 years ago. That's how things used to happen. Anyways, I listened to this music, this music was playing, and I knew it was unique as soon as I heard it. And I got the sensation, hmm, this is electronica. So I researched them, bought the album, and I was very surprised by it. It does fall in the electronica genre. So, and you know, half the people in this band would vomit in their mouth if they actually ever heard me say that their music is electronica. It does have a strong tango flair, but yes, it is pieces of riffs, pieces of piano licks and violin riffs all put together in a nice package. Like the song Pide Piso, for example. Even though there are certain members that would probably want to murder me if I said that, oh, you're electronica. Or some people actually call them electro tango. Um, but it, I hate to say it, but it, if you have to, if you're sitting down and you're forced to describe what this band is, electronica and tango will probably be the first two words that come out of your mouth. 
The big difference here though, is that they are making their own loops and samples and they're doing it with actual musical instruments. But in the end, it does come across as electronica. Until it doesn't. Like the song Cuesta Arriba, the singing and the violin, although it is that stabbing violin sound that we might relate to electronica, it's it's something that like carries the song or hangs with the song and changes throughout the song. It's it's not very canned, which I'm sorry, some electronica tends to feel a little canned, and this really isn't because even though the changes are, are very uh, short and and they're not very motify, you know, like it's not like a long guitar solo that has this nice motif that you can identify with. The instrumentation in this music is not very motify. It's not very identifiable. It's really not meant to be. They started this band as an experiment. And I mean, they, they literally did. You know, they started this band as an experiment. Like, hey, let's see if this would get some attention. And it just happens to be extremely successful. It's really something to watch them live because they can replicate their songs live, which is another indication that it's not really electronica if they can actually play these things for you live. The song uh, El Mareo, you can watch it live on YouTube. They replicate the same sound with guitar, piano, violin, and the concertina. It's like a, like a squeeze box. One of my favorite songs from them is Pa Bailar, Siempre Quiero Más. The version with no vocals is actually quite repetitive and I don't like it. I have to be honest, I'm not going to do an episode of a band I don't like, okay? If we have to B-sharp and see Bajo Fondo, it's not because we have to B-sharp and see how bad they are, you know? Maybe I'll do an episode of like how much someone stinks in my opinion, but no, today we're not doing that. The reason why I do not like the version of Paibala that has no vocals in it is because the version with vocals, which I actually believe is the version called Siempre Quiero Mas, that version is sung by none other than the very famous Julieta Benegas. She's an American-born Mexican singer. She plays multiple instruments. She produces, which comes with a package. I swear, if you play like three instruments or four instruments, you end up doing producing because you know how the other instruments should fit in the song because you're playing them. So now when the producer's sitting there trying to figure out how the song gets pieced together and the whole process, these musicians who play four instruments are like, well, hey, can I help? And then they end up doing some producing on their own. But that being said, Julieta Benegas does an excellent job. What is my favorite song from her? Because she is a Mexican singer, right? What's my favorite song from her? It's by Bajo Fondo. Siempre Quiero Más. By Bala. I just love it. It's got some good feel to it. The vocals are very nice. It's, you know, I actually think the song was in a commercial once too. I remember watching TV and the, the song was on the background in a commercial. It might have been like a car commercial. And I said to my wife, ah! I knew these guys would get some type of, you know, international, outside of Latin America notoriety. Another song you might want to listen to is Maroma. And when you hear the song Maroma, you will see what I mean by electronica. It falls right into that category. The instant you hear it, you think electronica, just by the way it's sonically constructed. But you see, it's not sonically recorded like other electronica songs. This talented group of musicians tends to make their own loops, beats, and they can replicate the stuff live with actual instruments, not samples and loops. So it's a big, big difference. It's just not the same that you would get from other musicians that tend to dabble more heavily in the electronica genre. It is really a modern take on experimental tango. And why not? It's great, man, and it's fun to listen to. You know, one thing that's driving me nuts, I, as I was doing research for this song, I was looking for this song from them that is sung in French, and I couldn't find it. And then I began to realize, maybe it's not Bajo Fondo, maybe it's a French artist. So now I'm looking for that French artist that, that does the other song, and I can't find it anywhere. So I don't know. Maybe that's uh, a future episode. <laughs> I don't know. At any rate, go and listen to the new tango, the new electronica, the great, the one and only band called Bajo Fondo, and please 
judge for yourselves. I purposely, not out of laziness, but purposely did not say a lot about that band here in this episode now because I could easily pick it apart. There's actually too much to pick apart. There's there, there are songs of like little pieces all put together, but it's all put together by them as musicians. The guitarist, the player of the concertina, the player of the violin, all these people, all nine of them, they do excellent work. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook under B Shop and C. If you really want to get my attention, our email address is keepitgroovybaby at gmail.com. Please email us any feedback and any ideas for future sodes. We do not just go to Wikipedia and regurgitate that information back to you. We check other sources. We go first, if the artist has a web page, we go first to their web page. In some cases, because I usually will try to contact the artist, in some cases the artists do get back to me and I use the information that they send to me. Also, in this case, I did not even make an effort to contact Bajo Fondo. I am assuming that they're too big. <laughs> they're really big in Latin America. Um, I'm just trying to introduce them to some of the other listeners who might not have that strong Latin background or maybe that don't on a regular basis look for Latin American music. Anyways, this is your host, Artie Astor, saying until next time, keep it moving.